powers of controller. The controller has certain specific powers that has been vested on the controller under certain provisions of the act and he also has certain general powers. So, let us first look at the specific powers that the controller has. Section 16 details the powers of the controllers to make orders respecting division of application. In case of an application having more than one invention, the controller can make some directions to divide to require the applicant to divide the application. 17 contains the powers of the controller to make orders respecting dating of application that applications could be antedated or post dated. 18 details the powers of the controller in cases of anticipation and 19 details the powers of the controller in case of potential infringement. 20 details the powers of the controllers to make orders regarding substitution of applicants. Now, these are some of the specific powers where the controller is allowed to exercise those powers in detail. We will look at these sections in detail. Section 15, power of the controller to refuse or require amendments, amendment of application etc. in certain cases. Where the controller is satisfied that the application or any specification or any other document filed in pursuant thereof does not comply with the requirements of the act or any rules made thereunder. So, we have gone beyond 14. 14 is a state where there is an adverse report, the objections are communicated to the applicant and the applicant assume the applicant comes for a hearing. At the hearing, the applicant is expected to clarify a stand and to clear these objections. The applicant can come for the hearing and give his submissions or orally or it can also give a written submission on the objection raised by the controller. Now, after the hearing, the controller feels that the application does not comply with the requirements of the act. The controller still feels that even after having afforded that hearing, there are still certain things that are not in order under the act and the rules. Then the controller may refuse the application, that is one option to the controller or may require the application and the documents to be amended to his satisfaction before he proceeds with the application and refuse the application on failure to do so. Controller can either refuse the application upfront or give an opportunity to amend. If the amendment does not happen to his satisfaction, he can still refuse. So, section 15 gives the power for the controller to make any refusal of an application and the ground for the refusal is going to be it does not comply with the requirements of the act and the rules. The controller can make an upfront refusal or give an opportunity for the applicant to carry out amendment. If the amendments are carried out to the satisfaction, it results in a grant. If the amendment is not carried out to the satisfaction of the controller, he can proceed to refuse the application. Section 16, power of controller to make orders respecting division of application. Divisional applications can be filed when one or more inventions are claimed in a single application. There is a rule on the unity of inventions. Every application should only cover one invention or a group of inventions which are linked by what we call a single inventive concept. So, you can only file one application for one invention. If there are more than one invention in an application, the controller would require the invention the, to be separated so that they can be a divisional application filed to separate that invention. So, if there are two inventions in a specification as filed and the controller feels that the, the, the second invention which is also mentioned in the complete specification should become a separate application then the controller can ask the applicant to file a divisional application. Uh, the applicant could also voluntarily file it. So, 16.1 says that a person who has made an application for a patent under this act 
at any time before the grant of a patent if he so desires or with a view to remedy an objection raised by the controller. So, if he so desires means it can be done voluntarily or with a view to remedy the objection raised by the controller means that it can also be directed by the controller on the ground that the claims of a complete specification relate to more than one invention. Now, this is the only ground on which you can file a divisional. The claims in the complete specification relate to more than one invention. The law requires you to file only one application per invention. This is mentioned in section 10 5. File a further application in respect of an invention disclosed in the provisional or complete specification already filed in respect of the first mentioned application. Now, the 16 1 allows the applicant to file a further application in respect of the invention disclosed in the provisional or complete specification already filed. So, the disclosure is already made, the claims have to be separated. So, the claims contain more than one invention, all the claims say the claims contain two inventions A and B. The applicant when he files the divisional what is called here the further application will now remove all the claims pertaining to invention B and put it in his further application. But the disclosure made in the provisional or the complete which was filed earlier will remain the same. So, it is a divisional is a process of separating the claims because they pertain to more than one invention. 16.2 states that the further application under subsection 1 shall be accompanied by a complete specification, but such complete specification shall not include any matter not in substance disclosed in the complete specification filed in pursuance of the first mentioned application. Now, when you make a divisional, the divisional shall have a complete specification. It is not just a case of filing mere claims, it should have a complete specification. But the complete specification shall not include any matter not in substance disclosed in the complete specification filed earlier, which means the disclosure is going to be the same. If you file a divisional based on an earlier filed application, you are going to move the claims which pertain to the second invention what we have called invention B, but the disclosure is going to be the same. You cannot include a matter not in substance disclosed in the earlier specification. This is the wording in 16.2. So, the disclosure is going to be the same, the claims are will look different. The disclosure will be the same, the claims will look different. If you compare a first mentioned application, the, wherever the language first mentioned application is used, we call the parent or the first application and wherever the further application is mentioned in this section, we call it the divisional or the child. So, there is a parent and a child and the child is created from the parent. The claims of the child and the parent will not match because that was the objective of filing a divisional. There is all the claims that pertain to the second invention has to be removed, but the disclosure will be the same because you cannot add while filing a divisional, you cannot add any new substance because the divisional will take the priority from the parent. The child will take the priority from the parent. For that reason, you cannot add new matter into the divisional. 16.3. The controller may require such amendment to the complete specification filed in pursuance of either the original or the further application as may be necessary to ensure that neither of the said complete specification includes a claim of any matter claimed in the other. So, the controller can ensure that the claims do not match. 13 simply states that the claims in the parent and the claims in the child will be different. The claims in it to rephrase it in using the language of the act, the claims in the first mentioned application and the claims made in the further application will be different. So, 16.3 allows the controller to make amendments to ensure that what is claimed in one is not claimed in the other. Explanation to 16.3 states that for the purposes of this act, 
the further application and the complete specification accompanying it shall be deemed to have been filed on the date on which the first mentioned application has been filed, which is what I mentioned. The child will take the priority from the parent and the further application shall be proceeded with as a substantive application and be examined when the request for examination is filed within the prescribed period. Uh, we saw instances in which a request for examination for a divisional has to be accompanied by a request for publication for the simple fact that examination of the child can be clubbed with the examination of the parent. Uh, we saw this in 24b sub rule 2 Roman 1. We saw that when there is a parent that is being currently examined, if a divisional is filed, then the divisional should be accompanied by a request for examination. This is to expedite the examination so that the examiner who is looking at the parent can also examine the divisional. So, divisionals are treated as a substantive application substantive application in the sense that they are numbered differently, they are treated as a separate application, they have a complete specification and, and it is treated as a substantive application, but it will take the priority from its parent.